Hello, everybody. Welcome to Real Time Recorded Week 25. I'm Zias Caravalo from ZK Research, and I'm here, as always, with Dave Michaels. And Dave, I understand uh, business travels back for you. You had a, you went to an event this week. I went. I was in Miami this week for a, for the IT Expo conference, and boy, are my arms tired. I don't remember travel being this difficult. I, I this is my second trip in in you know, and I'm still making rookie moves. It's just so hard to figure out this travel, and it's a lot of work. It's a lot easier to stay at home. That's that's my suggestion. Um, a lot easier. It is, but business uh, but travel. Yeah, my, back. I Miami guess. was nice though. Yeah, uh, you know, we got Enterprise Connect coming up. That's going to be live. I got uh, an invite uh, to AWS reinvent. I know. I think you see today. Or UC Expo is still planning to go full force ahead in October, too. So, you know, I, I think whether people want to stay at home or not, uh, we're going back to work, or at least we're going back we're on going, the road. We're going back. Yeah. So, you we're know, this, the news this week, there wasn't a ton of UC CC news, but something did make some pretty big news in this space, and that's the new version of Windows, Windows 11. And I this kind of, to me, kind of came out of nowhere. I had no idea Microsoft was even planning to release it this week. Generally, you hear rumors and stuff like that, so... Um, I know you uh, it, it, it did come out of nowhere, yeah. but it came out of nowhere the week before because they announced the end of support for Windows 10. And it was like, we're in the support. There's not even a replacement yet. And then they said, well, they're going to announce the replacement the following week. And so I was kind of hoping it was going to be Windows 9 because I'm still waiting for Windows 9. And, and, and I was assuming that it would be ready now, but I guess they're still working on it. So, it, yes, it's Windows Why 11 was Windows announced this week. I mean, it was a good one. You know, yeah, there's... No, there's, oh, that was terrible. It, well, XP is, was a really bad one. <laughs> well, 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 no, it, XP was good. It was the... Uh, you were thinking of Windows uh, 7, I think it was the bad one, right? I, I, don't, I don't remember there's now. There's been a lot of bad ones. <laughs> no, Vista. It was called Vista. Vista was the bad one. But, Vista. But the, right. uh, but, but the point is, is that we don't have a lot of choice. I mean, if you're on Windows, and you and I are both on Windows, I guess you're on both Mac and Windows, um, but... Uh, uh, we don't have a lot of choice. I mean, Microsoft's going to release a new operating system. We're all going to be on it, whether we like it or not. And we just hope we, you know, fingers crossed, it's going to be great. Let's hope it's going to yeah. be great. Um, so I think the biggest, there was a lot of stuff announced with Windows 11. And that, by the way, this is a one topic video. We're going to just talk about Windows 11 on this episode. Uh, but uh, a lot of things were announced. But the thing that I, got, I think got the most attention of most interest to our viewers uh, is is uh, Teams being pre-installed in Windows 11. And this is really confusing, and I can't quite get to the bottom of it. But as far as I can tell, Zia, it's just the um, the chat, the, the the messaging, and the video capabilities of Teams. Uh, is that is that correct? Yeah, messaging and video and calling, obviously, right, if you want to do peer-to-peer -peer oh, calling. calling, okay. Yeah. Uh, but but not not telephony calling, but but uh, voice calling. Uh, yeah, not PSTN. I can just do peer-to-peer, -peer, kind of like yeah. the Skype, right, yeah. In fact, I think okay, the best so, thing about it is just is Skype, right? It's just kind of a fancier... Well, that, that's, that's where I was going to go, because this is kind of a surprising thing. This is what they were talking about. It was actually 10 years ago when they when Microsoft spent $8.5 billion uh, to acquire Skype, that they were going to integrate this in. And they did a lot of stuff. They integrated into Xbox. They they built the uh, the Skype connector for Link, if you remember that. Uh, they were they were going down that path of, of Skype. Uh, and it, and honestly, it kind of made a lot of sense. If you think about other competitive solutions, like uh, uh, Apple has uh, chat and video built in. Facebook has chat and video built in. Google has chat and video built in. So it's kind of a logical thing when they were going down that Skype path. Uh, but as you know, Tony Bates didn't stay at Microsoft. He's over at Genesis. And so Satya is just now getting around to doing this, unfortunately. And so now it's confusing because they're not doing Skype they're doing Teams, but it's not really Teams. It's Skype. I, I don't really know what it is, to be honest with you. Uh, but I, I'll tell you, the biggest thing is it's a surprise um, because there's so much uh, antitrust concerns, so much backlash going on right now. Uh, we saw Skype already filed a complaint with the way Microsoft was, was doing Teams. Uh, we saw uh, that, that was mostly around the pricing and the bundling. Um, competitors report that most of their customers have this perception that Teams is free, uh, and and now they have to deal with that uh, licensing point of view, but also the, the notion that Teams is already installed, whether it's installed or not, the package says it has Teams built into it. So it, it's it's kind of confusing that they're doing this with this particular timing, uh, and I, I'm just surprised that they're going to do it at all, that they're not doing it with the Skype brand. 
Well, maybe that's an indicator, Dave, that the Skype brand's going to go away. Um, and Teams is largely built on Skype. In fact, I, I talked to somebody in a lab environment that, you know, one of these testing type companies, and they said when they run Teams, it actually shows up as Skype consumer. So that's still the engine underneath it that does that, um, which actually might explain some of the performance issues. Um, now, the, the way it works is in Windows 10, there was a Skype Meet Now button, and that'll be replaced by a Teams Chat button on the taskbar of Windows 11. So in some ways, it's a like-for-like like replacement. I don't know, actually, if you can do a, if somebody's running Windows 10 and you're running Windows 11, if you could do, like, if you could have a Teams to Skype conversation. That well, would make sense well, if they Teams, could. Teams came out with a friends and family version, which was a different, mm -hmm. it's the same app, but a different mode, different contacts, I guess. So I guess they're, I, I, I haven't tried that version yet, so I don't really know, but maybe it's that version. I, you know, yeah. Now, what and um, yeah, uh, it you now for people that are interested in this, it should be clear too, as Dave pointed out, it's not the full teams client, so you get the sort of light version of it on the taskbar. If you then wanted to run full teams, you would still have to go to the Microsoft Store and download it. Um, and actually, they're making the teams available in the Microsoft Store for the first time. Before it was sort of a it, it, you had to download the O365 bundle and things like that to get it. One of the, the cool features of it, though, is actually you don't have to be running Teams on the other side. So you could have it, anybody in your contact list you can send a message to. If they don't have Teams the client, it shows up as an SMS, and you can actually reply to it through SMS as well. So they did build a little bit of interoperability into that. Um, you know, as for the, you know, the, the threat to the rest of the industry, you know, we'll, we'll see what kind of impact this has on it, right? Microsoft... Um, uh, you know, when we were talking about this before, uh, we did this recording, but you were talking about what they did with Netscape and ran them out of business. But IE itself got killed off because they didn't really keep up with that, right? And so there's better browsers out there. So it's, you know, just, just because it's free, um, I, I do still think Teams is much largely a good enough product. It's not really, um, you know, it doesn't have the same quality as Zoom and WebEx and products like that. So, you know, we'll see what kind of impact it has. I do think it will get people perhaps using Teams more, but the converting that to a business user, I think is, is still a lot of work. I think there's going to be a lot of confusion because people are going to say, I already have Teams. You're going to see Teams yeah. on the box. You're going to see Teams on the, on the desktop. Uh, another point of confusion, actually, is uh, they also announced Android support coming up in Windows 11. And uh, this was pretty significant, right? I mean, there was a big deal when the Chromebooks got Android support. Uh, I know I have more apps on my phone than I have on my desktop. Uh, I think that's true for a lot of people, and this is really going to open up a lot of new capabilities. A lot of apps just aren't available on a desktop. I mean, things like uh, TikTok, which they showed, uh, but lo lots of apps just aren't even available on a desktop. And so I think I think this is going to be pretty significant. Um, it, uh, it, what surprised me is that they're not doing it the the proper way, right? The proper way is that Google it makes uh, Android available for free. And then typically what happens is vendors license the version and get it certified and that gives them the Play Store and they have and that's how we have these, you know, all these apps that work well within the Google ecosystem. Amazon didn't do that. Amazon took that free open source Android version, made their own version of it, which is what they use in their uh, Fire devices. Um, and and uh, they don't pay that Google fee for the Play Store. It's actually what uh, the Chinese brands are doing in China because they don't use the Western uh, Google Google Play Store. So when that happens, Google doesn't get any monetization out of, the, out of this. They take the open source and they do their own thing. Well, what Microsoft is doing is they're supporting the Amazon Play Store or App Store, not the Google App Store Play Store. So uh, they're bypassing Google completely on this. They're kind of stealing Android, in my opinion. Uh, now, Google, that's fair game. Uh, Google says you can do that, and that's what they're doing. Uh, but I think it's going to be really interesting because right now the App Store on Amazon is mostly consumer stuff, stuff that goes great on a Fire tablet, uh, not really an enterprise play. And so yeah. I, I imagine a lot of the developers that make apps for the Play Store and the App Store on Apple are now going to be looking at putting those versions on the Amazon Store. It's a big win for Amazon. It's a big win for the Fire devices. And it's a big win for Microsoft. They don't have to pay the Google tax, and they get to use all this all this code. I think it's a pretty significant play. And to be honest, this, um, Microsoft's done this a couple times now. Um, they did it with Chrome. Uh, they had a really broken browser. You, you mentioned IE. Um, 
they took the Chromium engine from, from uh, Google, which is uh, open source, free, put it into Edge, and in many ways made it better, and they're running with that now. It's already got like 6% market share in less than two years with, with uh, no advertising or anything like that. Um, they did it with uh, the word processor, like uh, Google had uh, Google, uh, Google Docs and Sheets. Web-based word processing was revolutionary. Uh, Microsoft has now got that with uh, Microsoft 365, with, uh, with Word and Excel. Uh, they did it with cloud-based email. Uh, Google was first with Gmail. Microsoft's now got uh, cloud-based email. So this has happened a few times now where basically I see Google being this great uh, idea factory. They have these brilliant ideas, and then Microsoft has got this brilliant engine at, at execution and really making these enterprise savvy. Microsoft's now to do that without paying the Google tax. Which yeah, well, they're a fast follower that's got a big install base, right? So, you know, the, the way this works is, I first of all, I do think this is an admission that that um, Microsoft doesn't know mobile and they certainly have been having trouble attracting developers. They actually, um, uh, they've been having this challenge for a while. They actually have developed some tools, Microsoft has, for Android and iOS developers to port their apps to Windows. And that's largely been highly unpopular. And, uh, they, you know, they really haven't had much uptake that way. Microsoft's also been moving this way for a while. Um, it, right now, the, um, there's a phone app that they developed that lets you pair an Android device to a Windows 10 PC. Yep. So, right, but, uh, and at the end of last year, Microsoft actually rolled out an update to your phone that lets you run Android apps on a Windows 10, but that required syncing a Samsung phone to it. Um, and that, um, and, uh, and this is a little bit different. You don't need the Samsung phone, but in that case, it only worked on Samsung devices. And, um, so it's, I'm a little unclear on, is this really Android or emulation mode? Because like the Apple's got the M1 chip and they're able to run on the Macs, uh, iOS and Mac OS. Uh, they get great performance on that. This is, you mentioned earlier, an Intel product. What, what, what are yeah, they doing? Went, so Windows? Microsoft had to go to Intel for help on this. And so Intel developed something called Intel, um, uh, a bridge mode. I think it's called Intel bridge technology. Um, that's, that's a runtime post compile that enables apps run nat natively on the x86 processor. And so the, the one I was talking about before where you could run Android apps is actually emulated at a software layer. And that's why the performance of it wasn't all that high. In this case with Intel, Intel is actually, em everything's got to be, it's all emulation, Dave. <laughs> you can't run one app from another operating system on another one without emulating it somewhere. It's just that now Intel is allowing you to emulate it in hardware, in, in silicon, and so you should get much better performance out of this. Which means, though, that I think if you're running that version of, um, I think you've got a Surface Pro there, and uh, you you upgrade to Windows 11, and you're not running the latest Intel process with Intel Bridge Mode, I don't believe this will work very well, or if at all. So I think you are hardware dependent. Apple could do it with the M1 processor because they built it themselves, and they, you know, and Apple owns that entire but ecosystem. it's also hardware dependent you have to have the new mini apple to get the new products to get that yeah 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 and uh, so I, th I think in this case if we're going to get into emulating apps from one operating system to another it needs to be done in hardware so I, I will give microsoft kudos in this case that they actually recognized that and went to intel for some help there uh but i do think it is somewhat of an admission that they've been having you know pro challenge with it and the and you know for app for amazon I actually think this could be, they could be the big winner out of this because they've had a trouble attracting developers to their app store as well. So now if you open up, like what's the install base of Amazon devices, right? It's, it's really small, but if they could open this up to the install entire install base of Windows you, the devices, that could actually be, real, that could be a good win-win because -win Microsoft gets the benefit of Amazon and Amazon gets the benefit of the Microsoft install base. So, but yeah, it is but really good. nothing. It's very cool. <laughs> But we've come right. to expect this from Microsoft, right? Well, that wraps up our one topic episode of Real Time Recorded. You know, next week is is our halfway where week week twenty six, halfway oh, yeah. through the year. Uh, so uh, uh, that'll that'll no doubt be an exciting. So we have a big party, it's a big celebration, serving cake. Okay, well, so we'll uh, July thanks, half thanks halfway. For, yeah, we'll have a new hat. So thanks for watching Real Time Recorded, and we'll be back next week with uh, another exciting episode.